Hello, my name is Noelle Stiff and I'm a guide here at Monticello. And today I'm standing inside the wine cellar. Might look a little bit small or cramped today, but in Jefferson's time, it housed a collection of wines from all around the world. And Thomas Jefferson famously loves wine. As a young man, he's drinking things like Madeira or Port, fortified wines that would have been popular here in the colonies. But after the American Revolution, Jefferson accepts a role as ambassador and minister to France. He's living in Paris for about five years, traveling all around Europe during that time. He becomes obsessed with French wine. When he returns here to the United States, his household consumes around 400 bottles of wine a year, and that number goes up to 600 during his presidency. Jefferson's importing most of the wine that you would have been seeing here in this wine cellar. He does try to grow grapes here on the mountaintop, but is never successful. Wine was an important part of the dining process here at Monticello, and you're looking behind me at a device called a wine elevator or a wine dumbwaiter. And the way this device worked, uses a weighted pulley system to bring wine from this room up to the dining room up above my head. We believe that someone like Burl Colbert, who was the head enslaved butler, or another enslaved servant under his supervision, would be down here in the space putting wine onto this device, and it could then be brought up by someone inside of the room. This serves a very important dual purpose. It saves time, but it also serves to limit the presence of slavery in the dining room, limiting who can overhear the conversations going on in there. Guests to the dining room included people like James Madison, James Monroe, the Marquis de Lafayette, and you can only imagine the conversations that would have been going on over a bottle of wine. 